When it comes to writing automated tests, I like end-to-end -end tests most. And the main reason is because they're most near to what an actual user would perform. So they perform an actual flow a user would run. Tools like Cypress and Playwright have made the DX around writing these tests really, really nice in recent years. There's one issue though, when it comes to CI. Now, when you run things on CI and you want to speed them up as much as possible, and this is in particular important if you run in a monorepo where you not just run one command, but potentially multiple and hundreds of commands, you want to apply different techniques. So there's like the usual caching that you might have heard about. And after that, what you want to do is distribute, right? So you want to distribute this across machines to parallelize as much as possible. The main issue with these end-to-end -end tests is they're usually a huge, big block that you cannot really split up. Now, when you apply distribution of tasks across machines, one thing you aim for is to distribute as evenly as possible. First of all, to utilize machines in the best efficient way. And second, to also reduce the overall CI running time, because in the end, the CI run finishes once the last machine processes its tasks. And so if you have like one machine that processes all those end-to-end -end tests, well, you will still have to wait until that is being done. Now we've seen this over and over again when we work with our clients, and this has been a pain over the last couple of years. Now, starting with Annex 18 and the introduction of what we call Product Crystal, we introduced a feature that allows us to automatically infer tasks. Now, why is that important? Why is that interesting? Now, I have here a workspace with a couple of applications and they are recording end-to-end -end tests. So here we have a Cypress test for that admin React application. Here we have a Playwright test and another Playwright test. Each of them has a bunch of end-to-end -end test files in here. So starting with Annex 18 and Product Crystal, you have these plugins installed at the Annex JSON level here for Cypress, for Playwright and some other technologies. And these plugins are able to infer what tasks to run for a specific project rather than you having to define them unless you want to override some of the properties. And so based on that, if you have Annex Console installed, you can click this icon here to visualize the different targets that can be run for this project here. Or you can also run Annex Show Projects on your command line. Now here, what is interesting, and you might immediately see this here as I scroll further down, is we don't have just one end-to-end -end test anymore, but we have also this end-to-end-ci -end that runs for each file. So interestingly, Cypress, as well as Playwright, allow you to pass a flag to the runner to just run a single spec file. And since we can generate these dynamically, we can also generate them on our CI system to therefore distribute these tasks. This allows us on CI to take that single end-to-end -end test block and split it up into much more fine-grained end-to-end test runs, basically at a file level. And now clearly, as you can see, these can be distributed much more uniformly across the different agents, and therefore it results in much, much faster end-to-end -end tests and overall CI runs. We've set up some experimental repositories where we actually went down from 90 minutes to 10 minutes of end-to-end -end test runs. Now, what does this look like in practice? If you go back to our sample application, I have already set up here NX Cloud. So if you go to the NX JSON, you will see the NX Cloud token set up. And I also set up our CI configuration script here. And so one of the main points here is this single line where we tell NX Cloud to start a CI run and distribute it across five agents. For now, the number here I specified is static, but I could also integrate a dynamic template here that allows me to specify the number of agents based on the size of the PR. Finally, below here, I just run the installation of uh, the NPM packages, and then I give NX Cloud the different commands that it should run. In particular here, I'm running linting, testing, and building, and here I'm running the end-to-end -end CI tests that we have seen before. Now, if I submit that to GitHub, and let me force push to trigger a new CI run. You will see here a new CI run gets triggered on my repository. I can also use that NX Cloud report here and jump over to the actual NX Cloud project. On the NX Cloud dashboard, you can see the run being listed here in progress. You can see here the end-to-end -end tests are being run currently and distributed across these different agents. And you can see here the NX replay, which is the remote caching feature that feeds some existing cached results back to the agent such that those don't need to be run anymore. So by automatically splitting these tests for you, we can really remove one of the major pain points when it comes to running these end-to-end -end tests on CI. But there's another one, which is the flakiness. Sometimes you just run either into timeouts and your tests fail, and you already know if you rerun it, they will succeed probably. But every time it is a waste of compute, it is also a waste of your time because you need to go and check, rerun the tests, see them pass again until you finally can get that PR merged. Now what we can do, we can detect these failed tests automatically. Because we have previous historical runs, 
data. And we also have the hash keys of those tests. And so if there is the same hash key that succeeded in the past, it is probably a flaky one. And so we can remove it move it to another machine and rerun it to see where it succeeds that time. Basically completely transparent from you and get the whole CI run succeed for you. So if you go to your NS Cloud dashboard on the detail of a certain run here for these end trend tests that I've run a couple of weeks ago, you can see there's one test that actually fails in a legit way. But if you scroll down a bit, you can see here a retry marker on this specific one. And if I open it up, you can see there have been two attempts. So it looks like the first one failed it was identified as a flaky test. And so an automated rerun has happened and the second attempt succeeded. So ultimately the entire run succeeded again. So if this sounds interesting, head over to annex.app to learn how to enable it for your specific workspace.